Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking with Me, and it's kind of late here today. It's 5.13 in the afternoon. I'm getting a late start, but I wanted to do a little short video for you guys because I all have all of the tag pages ready to go. They're all covered and ready to go. I, I still want to put some words on some of them, but other than that, they're ready. So I wanted to get some tags for the front and for the inside made. Now I have some of these little pre-made tags. They're very, very thin. So I'm going to put a cover on the back just so that they'll be a little bit thicker. This is just the outside of a paper pad. All in the world that is, or the back side of a paper pad. And I'm going to glue that down there and then trim it out. And that's going to make my tag a lot stronger because this is almost the like a copy paper consistency. It's very, very thin. But I got a late start today because I just got back from the from my pre-op and everything is a go. I'm supposed to have my first surgery on the 5th of April. And then I'll have the second one on the 19th. So I wanted to get these journals finished that I have because they're already spoken for. <laughs> and I have those. I have my little rose one. It's about ready to go. I need to get that out to Elaine. And then this one is spoken for. So I need to get this one out the door. So just needed to get some things wrapped up and I wanted to do tags today because I, my eyes are still really bad dilated <laughs> and I didn't want to do anything that was really long because I can't see that well but I did want to do my tags so I can start putting those in okay so that is that one it's all covered that makes it a lot thicker and then I'm going to go ahead, this is a shorter one, and I'm going to go ahead and cover it as well. Just because it is not, it's a little bit thicker than the other one, but it's not very thick as either. I've already got glue all over me. I'm driving my glue. We did get some art glitter glue in today. We only got the 8 ounce and the 16 ounce. Those are available to ship. We have the packing and aluminum foil and all of that kind of stuff that we can ship them in now i still still suggest but it's up to you if you are in like a place like canada or you know a place that it's still freezing at night i still suggest that you wait until at least the first of april but if you want to order it at your own risk then you go right ahead um we're going to pack them as best we can, but that we still can't give you a guarantee that they won't freeze if they sit in a truck, you know, all night or sit out in your mailbox all night or something like that. And you've got, you know, minus 20 degree weather. <laughs> I don't know anybody right now that got minus 20 except maybe parts of Alaska. But anyway, I just wanted to let you guys know that. But we do have the big refill and the 8 ounce 16 and 8 ounce and we also got some of these caps we haven't had these caps before and when somebody would buy the big 8 ounce they didn't have a cap to go on it because the 8 ounce only comes with just the flat cap but we do have some of these caps now they come in a two pack if you want to purchase those and those in okay now, what I'm thinking I'm going to do is, this is the large one, and I want this flower to show on there, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my tags on here. I'm going to not going to cover the front, per se. I am going to attach the tag where it'll flip out this way, and then the smaller tag will flip out this way. So you'll still have two tags on here. They're going to have lace on them and all different kinds of things. But I wanted to pull, I've got a little red right here in that flower. So I wanted to pull a little of this red in there to give, give the front a little pop of color. So that's what I think I'm going to do for these tags. 
Now, you could do just stack tags if you wanted to. I have saw, I think Tracy did stack tags, but I didn't want to cover up all of my paper that I put on the front and my little bird's nest and all of that. So I thought I would do mine with a little bit of a flip on them so that you still get all of the front page, but you also get a beautiful flower. Okay. That's how I'm going to put that down. And I hate that I had to cover up this little flower in the back. It's the only problem with that, isn't it? And I'm going to trim that off. See what we have on the front side now. And yes, this is an Edith Holden book page. It's a very, very old one. I have read it many, many times. And... I've got like five more copies of the same book. This one is just happened to be one that was falling apart. That was in the trash bin at my local library. Okay. Ooh, I like that. So that is that part. Now these little pieces right here, I do not throw these away. I keep those and I stamp on. And I'll show you some that I have. I just stamped a few when I got back from the doctor's office while my eyes were burning and hurting. I just stamped a few of those. And I'm going to put a Triple V Vintage. This is Veronica's papers, and she's told me that she has some brand new dyed papers that she's excited about. That she's going to be getting to us so we can show before long. I can't wait on those. And Veronica, just let me know, and when they're in, I'll I'll start buying, girl. I don't mind buying them at all. You don't have to send them to me for free. Because these, I know these take forever to do, so I don't mind paying for them. Okay. Well, let's see. I do have a card somewhere in this house. Isn't that pretty? So, so pretty. And look, this side's even darker. I should have used that side, but that one's okay. We'll use this side on the next one. That's even darker laced there. Her papers are gorgeous. And this is coffee dyed with doilies, I guess is how you would put it. You put doilies on it when you dyed, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how she does it, but she does it. You know what? I didn't punch. I didn't punch out my little hole, did I? Let's see, do I want to even, I don't know, I'm going to think about it. I may not even punch it out. I may just put some lace up there. We'll think about that for a minute. Leave that one for stamping and leave this part up here for stamping. We'll put that back in our box over here so that we can use that. And we'll cover this one. Now this one, I thought about covering it with maybe some of this pink flower. And that'll bring out some colors on the front. I think right there. I think that will work. I, when I started to do these, I felt like I thought to myself, I don't know if I should do them or not. Because it seems like everything that I've been doing lately is called a flip something or other. But that's what you do when you don't want to really cover your papers. Because, you know, I could put this down like this and then put a smaller tag on top of that but it would cover my bird's nest and part of my bird and I just don't want to do that so I'd rather have it where it'll lay down but it'll also flip out and you can journal on the back and then you'll be able to see all of the paper on the front I'd rather have it like that and sometimes what you'd rather is the best thing to do I hope you can't hear my stomach. It is growling like crazy. <laughs> I didn't really eat before I went. And then it was so late when I got back. I didn't want to eat a late lunch. Because it will be dinner time before long. So I just kind of. I drank some water and I didn't eat. And now my stomach is going crazy. Okay, isn't that pretty? Now let's put some paper on the back of that. This time we'll use the brighter side yes now I haven't thought about how I'm going to hinge these but I'll probably hinge them with just some coffee dyed paper maybe some of this even you can hinge them lots and lots of different ways you can hinge them with washi tape with part of the paper that you put on or another piece of regular copy paper or 
you can hinge them with part of the paper that you're using for the backing. My hubby said before he left, he said, you going to do a video? He had to go pick up some medicine. And I said, yeah, I'm going to try to do one. And he said, don't cut your finger off because I know you can't see. <laughs> I said, I'm going to try my best not to cut my finger off. That's all I would need. No, I can see a little bit better now. They've gone, they're not quite as dilated as they were. Okay, so that will go. Here's my front cover. So that will go. This one I want down here a little ways. And then this one up this way, like that. And then they're going to have some lace on the side of them. All different kinds of embellishments and hmm, I think I'll just put some lace on the top and not punch a hole to put anything through now for my little hinge I think I'm just going to use some of this paper to put a hinge on here so let me cut a strip or two of this so I went ahead and put the little hinges on my tags and I stitched around them. Now this little hinge, I only made it, let me find my ruler. Um, it is three quarters of an inch and then I just folded it in the middle, glued it down a little bit right there and then I just stitched on it. And so you really can't tell where this ends and that starts. And then this will be the part that I glue down on here. I did go ahead and stitch around this tag just so that I would have the stitching on the tag done and then I went ahead and put this one on as well and I stitched around it and that's gonna go up and under there like that so we're gonna glue these down I glued mine down like this with the little tab in here you can wrap it around if you want to but I just didn't want it to get in the way of anything else of my spine that I'm going to insert in there and all of that so I just did it this way you could also put these on before you put all of this paper down and then cover that with paper but to me that's a little bit more trouble and I don't mind that little bit little strip of paper there that doesn't bother me I mean that's just another addition to this the way I look at it okay so that one's there we're going to put this one close to the bottom we may even put it all the way to the bottom no i want to bring it up just a little bit this there's a little plain place right here and i just want to cover that with the tag pretty much about like that and then i want a little of that green showing around the bottom so i'm going to put that down like that and see our bird still shows even if you have the flags the flags even if you have the tags down, the bird still shows. And again, I'm gluing it here. Oh, I just pull my little tag up there, so or my little lady, my little label. Glue that tag down. All right, so that is how the front is going to look. Other than, we, like I said, we are going to put some lace on this. But I think I'm going to wait about putting lace on. And then see, you've got two flip open little tags that you can do all kinds of journaling on the back of them and then these will flip down our spine is going to attach right here and we'll attach our spine a little bit later i'm not going to attach it right now i want to do as much with this as i can okay those lay down nice and well i like that can't really see from the side that there's anything on there i'm going to put a little more ink right there all right, so that's going to be our first page. This is going to be my second page right here. Yeah, because I want to put a pocket on the bottom of this, and I don't mind covering this up. The other one at the bottom had a bird. And I didn't want to cover my bird up, so I'm going to put a pocket here. Okay, I think I'll glue this piece. This is just a scrap piece of the book page. I'm going to cut it off on either end. And I think I'll glue it there and let that be our pocket. I'll glue it together and that'll keep from wasting that part. So let's mark it where we want to cut it. And this is just one of those little scrap pieces. And do I want to go all the way to the edge? I think I'm going to come right inside my stitching. 
don't really want to go all the way to the edge and cover up my stitching. So I'm going to do it like that. I think. Pretty sure. We'll see. Yeah, I like that. I don't mind that at all. You'll still be able to see all of the stitching. Let's just make sure that I got this side straight. It looks a little crooked. So I'm going to glue this together. And I'm just going to use my art glitter glue because this is pretty thick paper that they used on her books. Okay, and we'll cut a little pull in the top. Again, I'm going to use my little oval punch here. This is a two inch oval. And I like it to punch your little pulls there. Sometimes with the circle, I go a little bit too deep. So I like my little oval punch. And you can go to my Amazon store and you can find that oval punch. I have it in my Amazon store. So I'm going to put this down and then we'll do a little bit of embellishing on it. Let's see, does that look straight to anybody? Because to me it looks really crooked. <laughs> Uh, okay. Now let's decide what we want to put on here for embellishing. Hmm. I might be able to tear around this a little bit and use that for embellishing. Let's see if we can. Don't know. We'll give it a try. It's been coming a cold, cold rain here today. It's not cool outside that much. Well, I think it's like, it's 55 now. But the rain is very, very cool. I'm going to go ahead and tear this side just a little bit because it's too straight right now. I know I'll get a tiny bit of my butterfly, but that can't be helped. And I think I'm going to put a little cheesecloth behind it. So let me find my cheesecloth. So while digging for my cheesecloth, I found this. And I think I like this better. This is just a scrap of some lace. I'm thinking it come off of a wedding dress, I believe. Because you can see that end. Isn't that pretty? Now that we have the spools... I can actually organize all of my lace. I've had it just everywhere in all different buckets. and But now that Alicia has made the spools for us, we can organize it all. And we do have more of those spools coming. She, had, she cut more today, as a matter of fact, so I should have those in the shop tomorrow for anybody who wants them. And if you don't know, Alicia is my youngest daughter, and uh, she has never really been into crafting. But now she loves woodcraft, any kind of woodcraft or things like that. But she's not ever been into paper crafting. That's not her thing. She can't be still that long. So Melina and I have been trying to get her to do some different things for a while, and she just she had no interest. So her hubby bought them a Glowforge and she has fell in love with it. She is cutting everything that can be imagined and burning, you know, things, burning names into things and I mean she's she's having a ball. So that's the one that cut our little um bobbins to put our lace on. I'll show you one in just a minute for anybody who hasn't seen them. They'll be opening up a store shortly. Right now they're going to sell through my shop, but they'll be opening up their own store before long. I think they're going to open it up on Etsy. And they'll do custom orders and all of that. All of that kind of stuff. So she's very excited. She found something that she can do that is considered crafting, but it's not paper crafting. Oh yeah, I like that. So there's our pocket. This is the bobbins. And you can see how large they are. That's my hand. That's how large. So 
they come tin to a package and they're just the right width to put your trims and laces on and then it has a little slit right here that you can put your trim down in to keep it from keep from having to use a pen because when I use a pen I get stuck with a pen. Now I will tell you these are, are cut or burned on a laser so if you get them and around the edges they may be a little bit dark just take a cloth and you can wipe that right off if you don't want to get your lace you know get any of that on your lace just take a cloth and wipe it off because they are burned with a laser and sometimes the laser does leave a little trace of something it leaves a little trace of the burned which doesn't bother me at all but I know some people might not want to get that on them so I just take a little cloth dry cloth and just wipe it off and it comes right off no problem but I wanted to tell you that I wanted to show you those and then this is the custom cutting boards that they're doing I think you maybe you can see that that's customized and they'll customize those for the person they're very large this is their oldest daughter and you can see how big it is compared to her so it's very pretty I think he did a wonderful job on designing that he designed all of that and then Leisha's working on some Easter eggs she said she just had to get them get them perfected and then she could do them in paper or wood or whatever but she's having a ball with that and I'm glad I'm I'm happy for her. glad she's found something that she really likes let's see I think on here I'll put a number and I'm just gonna cut this number this is just one of the Tim Holtz I think it's Phil notes let's see Tim Holtz stamps and I do believe it's Phil notes yes Phil notes and I'm going to cut that a little bit smaller. And I just stamped these, like I said, on some of that Edith Holden paper that I had left over. I just stamped these little pieces on there. It stamps real well. Um, let's see. I want it right here because I don't, I want to take away some of that solid there that I've got so I'm just going to put it right there I didn't put any ink around it which I should have but I didn't and I think I'll put another one on here this one just says field and we may put that one right there and these none of these little pieces were trimmed exactly the right size I just chose a stamp and started stamping I do that when I have a little bit of time <clears throat> I just drag out my stamps and drag out my little pieces of paper scraps and I just stamp a while until I can get all my other stuff done and get caught up because I can always stand, uh, stamp while I'm waiting on a report to print or something like that there we go and I think I want something right there because that's got a little odd edge so I'm gonna put this one there I've got to stamp some words too words will go good on here I think I'll put it right there and all you're doing when you're putting little words and things on the joins is just kind of offsetting that join where it doesn't look like you've got paper just sitting like that even though you do it just takes away a little bit from that and makes it look more cohesive to your eye all right, we'll make a tag to go in that a little bit later. So I'm gonna lay that piece aside. Okay, I'm gonna grab this one, and I think on this one I wanna put one of those little envelopes that I had yesterday. Okay, so we're going to, let's see, I think, I'm, I think I'll attach it in there like that, and then when the spine goes in, that'll be closed up. Then it'll flip out like that, and you'll have a pocket, and we'll probably put a little pocket here, I want lots of interaction with this journal. All right, I'm going to cover this with some paper. Again, we're going to go with Edith Holden, just because that's what we've started with, and I want to finish up with Edith Holden. Ooh, that's pretty, isn't it? 
we may have to go with that. Okay, now I'm going to stitch around this piece before I glue it down. Well, I'm not exactly sure where I left off because I had to end my video real quick because we had some customers come in and company and that kind of thing. And I'm not sure where I left off. But I wanted to um, show you what I have done. Let me get this little piece back on there because it just fell off. I didn't have it clipped good, I guess. So what I, the only thing I've done different, I think, since I did the last video on here is I put a little piece of lace here and here at the top of these tags. I put some butterflies on. I found this in my stash, and this is from e -Papery, and I put that on because I loved those buttons in the green with this. And let's see, I put this little clip up here. I made just a little notebook and put that there. It's just got some scrap paper in it. And we had done this pocket together. I did put a few little numbers and butterflies and branches and different things on in, in different places. Here I did a little side tuck pocket and we'll make a tag for that. And then I think I was about ready to put this envelope on. This is just one of those little brown envelopes. And I attached it on the inside here. Put that on, covered it with the Edith Holden paper. And then I just put a little bit of lace down the side of it. So that'll be a little flip out. And let's see. I put this little uh, tag on here, or this little pull on here. This is one of the wheel tail punches. And then I put that little flower on right there because this was kind of plain and I wanted to fill it in with something. So I just put that on. I did do a little stamping here and there, but that, I mean, you can do that or not. I just wanted to fill in some spaces. Don't think I did anything on that one, no. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna attach this little journal together. I said little journal, it's gonna be a big journal, but we're gonna attach it together. I still have a few more things that I wanna do on the inside of it, but I wanna go ahead and get it attached so my pages and everything stop sliding in all different directions. Now what I have is some of our stone paper. And, well, I cut the top of it off, but it looks kind of like this. It is stone paper. It is very, very strong. You can't tear it. I mean, it almost feels like material. But I'm going to use some of this to attach this together with. And we're going to use that same concept as we used on the other journal that we made the other day where we made the little pieces and put up in there like that. Let me see if I can find that journal. And you'll know what I'm talking about. For some reason, the words are not coming to me this morning. It was like an accordion journal. Like this. We are going to do something similar to that on these. Now, I have cut this piece down. They are 12 inches. And then I have cut it down to the size of my tag from here to here, which is seven and a half. So measure your tag and make sure you get the right height on yours. And let's see. I think I'm going to start at the back. It always, I always seem to do a little bit better when I start at the back. I'm going to put my little glue mat down here so I don't get glue everywhere, maybe. All right, I think this one's going to be the back one. I haven't done really anything to it yet except put a few words and things on. Now, since this is 12 inches wide, I ended up, I did a one inch score line. And I ended up with one, two, three, four, five mountains, but I needed six. So I'm going to use this end piece right here because this paper, like I said, is so tough. It does not tear, so it's not going to hurt a thing for me to use this. We're going to use score tape on this because this is more of a paper. I mean, this is more of a material. And the reason is this is more of a material than it is a paper. So I want it to hold really, really well. So I'm going to use, and I'm going to, i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. That's what I've been saying for the last five minutes, isn't it? I'm going to put just a little bit of ink on my mountains just so I can see them because this is white and I'm having a problem seeing white. So just a little bit, all I need. Let's see, and a little bit on that one. 
That's just so that I can see. Nothing else. All that's going to go on the inside so it doesn't matter. And I think I'll just go ahead and put two on there. Not going to hurt a thing. And I don't have my little tear tool here. But that's okay. We can tear it with our hand. Make sure you rub the backs of your score tape before you take the backing off. I didn't on that one and you see how the first one did. Which is fine because I'm going to have that second one on there anyway. Now I will tell you, score tape is not forgiven. Once you get this laid down, it's there. So just try to get it as even as you can. Now you can put a little bit of glue stick on top of your score tape and it'll give you a little bit of wiggle room but it is not very forgiving at all i think on that one i'm just going to put one i don't think i need a second one it's not really wide enough for a second one and this one is going to hold without a problem and you could always go down through and stitch these after you put your score tape on, just stitch down through there if you're afraid they're going to come apart. Um, I have seen those done that way. If you want to do that, that is perfectly fine. All right, that is our first one. So that's the back page. Looks like it's down well. Then we're going to take the next one, and I think this is my next one. And we're going to lay it down. Now you need to line your tags up. Don't worry about whether this is lined up or not. Line your tags up. And let's see. I'm going to put score tape down through here. All right, I'm going to open this one up. I'm going to put a little score tape down through here. Okay, then with this one lined up with the one behind it, I'm going to hold that in place. I'm going to flip that guy over and press that down. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we'll do the next one. Well, we got a racer outside. I'm telling you, some of these noises that some of these teenagers make in their cars. They're not having to pay for their gas yet, are they? <laughs> they wouldn't do that if they were. Oh. Uh. Okay, I didn't get that one laid down exactly right, so we're going to try that again. Okay, there we go. Now let's see. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, press that one down. Now we'll grab our next one, which is this one. Open it up. Trim off my strings here. All right, we're going to put our score tape... I like to fold it up and make sure that I'm putting my score tape on the right little hump. I just went ahead and highlighted all of those so that I could make sure I got it right. That looks good. So we're going to put our score tape on this piece right here. And then again, you're going to make sure that you get these tags lined up. Oh, I didn't pull the backing off my score tape, did I? See, I'm trying to think and talk and work at the same time. That's a lot for my brain. All right, and then just fold this over. Press it down. Okay. Then this one will fold over that way. And I'll, I'm just going to dry fit it. That's what I call dry fitting when I fold it over make sure it looks good. Now, when you're putting your score tape or whatever on here, you want to put it up closest to the fold here, not way back here, or you'll have too big of a gap in there. This is a little bit different than we did that journal the other day, but the concept is similar, very similar. Okay, let's just make sure that they're all, yep, they're all opening up right. I'm kind of glad I did put that ink on the other parts now because it is actually inked on the inside. All right, this will be our next one. So we'll open that up. Put our score tape down here. 
And I know this is different than anybody else did their tags, but that's fine. You don't have to do yours exactly like me. You don't have to do it exactly like anybody else. Do it the, be the way that you feel most comfortable putting yours together. I'm not real comfortable with the material stitching like uh, Tracy did. I'm not, I'm not real comfortable with that. I don't like, I don't want mine to slide too much. I don't mind them having a little bit of give in them, but I don't want them to slide too much. Okay, had to get that even there. Make sure when you press them over that you're pushing it out as far as you can. Oh, I had to look up and make sure I started my video. I got interrupted a couple of times when I was trying to get started and then I thought, I was sitting here and I thought, oh no, I didn't even start my video. But it did. Thank goodness. Okay. Because I don't think I could do this again. <laughs> Not the same way, anyway. All right. Go ahead and put, let's see, that's going to fold up that way. So we're going to put that right there. We'll just go ahead and, okay. Then press that down real well and go ahead and bring your other one up that's our next one right there so the inside of these is basically closed up now if you want to leave the inside open where you could slide tags down in here you can I haven't put glue on this part because I wanted to get mine my spine put in first before I did anything else. I can always stick my art glitter glue tip in there and put a little glue on the inside of them. But um, I just wanted to get mine stuck down first. But if you want to leave them open where you could slide a tag down in there or slide a tag in here, whatever way you want to do it. Well, you won't be able to slide one in here, but down the top, that's up to you. You can leave them open in different places. But right now, we're just doing this, and then I'll see what else I might want to do to it, to them. And I'm not going to worry about that string. It's down in there good, so I think it'll be fine. All right, put that there. Now, I don't know what kind of binding you would call this other than Edith's binding, <laughs> because I have not seen this exact binding anywhere. It's just... I thought about it this morning when I was trying to think about how I wanted to close these and what I wanted to do. And I thought, well, you know, I could do exactly similar to what I did the other day and just use this thick material. That way, if it does get opened and closed a dozen times, you won't have to worry about it because it's going to hold. And then when you press that over, just make sure you press it as far as you can. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but it just helps a little bit. All right, we'll fold that back. And we're going to put our score tape right there on that. Press that down real well. Pull your backing off. And then press your tag down. And then just take them and really give them a good press in there. And that is your binding. And then you have a little bit of an expansion, as you can see, between them. This one a little bit more than others, but that's okay. We'll put some pockets and different things in here, and then we can put some more ink down in there, so that's going to be fine. They're not going to be perfect, but they're going to be good enough, and that's what I like. There, and there. And you could always, if you wanted to put some lace or something down through that or cover that, if that bothers you, you can do that. I like that. Now, you could, another thing, you could have glued these together if you wanted to, but it would have made it really tight like that, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted mine left kind of open. Now, what I was saying about pockets, you could have a pocket on each one at the top if you wanted to. See, down in there? 
I am going to glue the bottom together. I didn't do that before because I wanted to be able to open them up, but I am going to glue this bottom together. Now, some people have waited to stitch them until they got their spine put on, and then they stitched all the way around that way. You could do that too if you want. That just didn't feel comfortable to me. I have to do what I feel like I can manage, and that, that wasn't comfortable way. I tried it on one little one and I just, I couldn't get it. My sewing machine has a, it's just a small area and I couldn't make the tag turn like I wanted it to, so. But you may have a different one and yours might work great. Like I said, that's why you have to do what's most comfortable for you. Because everybody has different tools and different ways and, you know, different bends in their hand. My hand doesn't bend like somebody else's does. So, do what is most comfortable for you. So, that's good. Now, I think I will probably put some lace uh, just loosely over this and glue it maybe at the very, very edge. I'm not sure. I know I want to put some ink on there just to tone that white down. But I'm thinking I might want to put some lace on there too. This only comes in white, gold, I think white, gold, and silver, so I didn't have much of a choice of what colors to use. Now, I don't think I'm going to leave mine open at the top for pockets. I don't know. This one is already purchased, so I'm not sure if the person would want to do that or not. If you put something in there, it would have to be really, really tall. I'm going to go ahead and close this one up because... That wasn't a plan to make the top pockets, so I'm going to go ahead and close it. It would, I think it would just look a little strange if you had a tag poking out of a tag at the top. And if you put short ones in there, you'd have to dig it open to get down to the bottom. So, so I'm going to close these up real quick. All right, those are already glued, and I just clip them just to make sure that they the glue catches because it does have that stitching on there and now let's see we'll put our little notebook that back there when that dries we need to make a tag for this so let's go ahead and do that we'll decide what height tag we want and I'm going to use again I'm probably just going to use the backing of this page here this come off of a uh an eight by eight pad I do believe we'll just use this See what we can come up with here. Yeah, I think that will work. So let's see how wide we need this. All right, now for height, I just cut it. I just looked at it and cut it. This is, let's see, this is five and three quarters, and it is uh, three and three quarters, or a little bit, a little bit over. So that's going to be good enough. So I'm going to glue this down to here we'll get that flower right there and then we can put a label or something else on there and I'm stitching around most all of my tags and things just because I think it looks better but you don't have to do that as I tell you all the time that's not something that you have to worry about doing if you don't have a sewing machine you can just put it together see that's why I put my little mat down because I'm an over gluer and when I get finished with this I can just take it to my sink and wash it and it all that glue comes right off so I don't have to worry about getting it all over my mat over my desk and we do have these the mat and this is a this is just a piece they're huge they're large they'll cover your desk area but this is just a piece. I had one many years ago, and I tell this a lot, but, you know, we always have new members. I had one many years ago, and I actually accidentally had it under something that I cut with an X-Acto knife, and I cut it. <laughs> so when I cut it, I just went ahead and cut a little piece out so that I could use that piece like this. And just, So that's what I do. I'm going to put this 
maybe. No, nope, that's not going to cover it either. My favorite paper. We'll cover it with that. I'll use my glue stick. Same with glue stick. If you get glue stick all over this, you can just either take a baby wipe and wash it, or just take it to your sink, put a little soap and water on it, and wash it right up. Use it over and over again. Now, do we, yeah, we want to cut this into a tag shape, don't we? So I'm just, I'm not even going to pull out my little template. I'm just going to cut that side and flip it over. Cut this side. And I think Gail Davis is the one who has spoke for this tag album or tag journal. So Gail, it should be finished to probably this afternoon or early in the morning one. Now I'm going to take this and stitch around it and then we'll come back and we'll put it in this journal. Okay, so I made the tag, stitched around it, and then I just put a little bit of just some scrap lace at the top. Hopefully it fits because guess what? I didn't dry fit it. <laughs> yes, it does. It fits fine. Now I am going to put probably a little label right here at the top. And I think I'm going to pull some black in because we've got black down here. So I'm just going to use probably one of Tim Holtz labels. All right, let's just use Timeless. I think that's a good sentiment to put on there. So we're going to leave that page, go to this page. Now this one I didn't put anything on, but I'm thinking I want to put a belly band on here, a lace belly band that so you will still be able to see through it but you you know will have the lace belly man where you can tuck something under there so let me get a piece of lace okay i think i'm going to use this one i like the color of it and we can put it down lower so that number will still show and i'm going to double it up i'm going to put two layers of this on there So that it'll be a little bit more sturdy. So like that. So let's trim that right there. I've still got to get all of my lace around my spools that Alicia made. I'll just put a little bit of glue right down the center of that. And glue that together. Okay. Then we'll put a little bit on each end. And with your lace belly bands, pull them out pretty tight because if you don't they they don't hold well all right we'll let that dry and then we'll have something to put in there not sure yet what but I'm just gonna let that dry <laughs> I think I'm good with everything else on there this one I, hmm, I think I'm good with I really don't think I want anything else on there the person who gets it can always add a pocket or something I'm putting extra ephemera in of course and so they can do with as they wish. Now I do need a side tuck pocket here. I do need another tag here for side tuck. Okay, this is a pretty thick piece of cardstock. So I'm going to use this to make a tag to tuck in there. So this one is cut at, just in case you wanted to cut yours exactly like mine, but you don't have to. Three and a half by five, uh, six and a half. And that will tuck in like that right there. So we're going to go ahead and cover this with some paper. I think just covering it with the front and the front is going to be good enough. The back is, I mean, this is pretty sturdy cardstock. I don't have a flower to put on here, but I'm thinking I might just go this route and just put the words on there and then I could always cut out a flower and put there or just put one of my washi flowers there because I don't want to cut into another piece of paper. I've got some scraps here that I'm trying to use up. So are you guys ready for spring? I am. I'm more than ready. I don't I don't do good winter. That's just not my season. I think we might just put that tall flower on there and put a tag down here and let's see if I have a butterfly that would work. No, nope, that didn't work. We might have a butterfly we could bring in there too. We could put that butterfly on. It looks like he's flying away after he had his lunch. He or she. Okay, these, let's see, are these washy? 
some of these little stickers I have are washi and some are not. These are. And yes, I call them washi and I know some people say that's not washi. Well, that's what the company calls them. And see that little piece just tore off there. These little skinny ones are a little bit harder to get apart without tearing them. But I just put them back together once I get the backing off. They're actually just thin acetate is what they are. Okay, there it goes. This one actually came all to pieces, but just put it back down like that and it's okay. Let's find one of Tracy's tags maybe, or labels to go there. Okay, we can go ahead and put our butterfly down. And I think on this one, I'm gonna put another label. I just feel like I want another something right in here. Okay, I think we'll put a label right there. And then let's cut this into a tag shape. Then we'll go stitch and this one will be finished. Right here is this one. Got all of my little books and everything drug out here. There's that one and it'll go right there. I love that green with green. That's pretty. Didn't plan that, but it's pretty. Now I need to make a tag to go in here, but I I have a tag that I think will work in there, so I don't think I'm going to make one of those right now. I will put that in there later. Um, I feel like I need something here. Don't don't know what exactly, and I may not, but I feel like I need something there. It just looks a little plain to me, but I'm not sure right this minute, so I'm going to leave that. I may put a label or something there under that bird in a little while. On this side, I thought about putting another one of those side tuck pockets. So I need to look at that. But I'm going to go ahead and take these off. I think this is nice and dry by now. All of that glue. Yeah, looks good. Um, yeah, I think I want to put another side tuck pocket here. Just not cover this, just make a small one. And on here, I'm, I'm thinking about putting another little pocket down here or even a side tuck over here, just a small little side tuck. I'm not sure about those yet. I haven't thought that completely through, but this is the gist of our journal. And these are, you know, you can decorate these up any way that you want. I mean, there's lots and lots of ways you can decorate them up. So I think that's all I'm going to do on the video. Like I said, I will go ahead and add some other things in here. I'm not going to add too much because I'm going to include a packet to Gail. And then she can add more in if she wants. Uh, I will include some lace for her too in case she wants to cover this. She may not want to cover it. I wouldn't cover it if it was mine, but some people might not want that to show. But that is our tag journal. I think cute as it can be. Now I did, like I told you, I stamped out some words. I had some words in my stash. I put those on there. Just putting the words in different places where your paper joins when you collaged, just to me makes it look a little bit more cohesive, brings it together a little bit more. Um, these are just some charms that I've had in my stash for a while. And then my the bulb clips that we sell just the um, little well tail punches and I just stamped on it a little bit to keep it from looking so plain. So that is it. This is just another well tail punch right there on that one. And I just put an eyelid in there and put a little key hanging off of it. And I want to put something here. I know that looks a little bit plain so I want to put something there and I don't know. I've got a couple more pages I want to decorate on. But that's it for the video. I, and that's just the gist of how to put everything together. I know you guys can do that. It's not that hard. It's pretty simple. And this paper, this stone paper, wherever it might be now, buried under something, it is ideal for journals and things. And I think we still have a good bit of it in stock. I'll have to look. But... It's very, very thick. It doesn't tear. I say very thick. It just doesn't tear. It's got like it's got a paper or something on the inside of it. It's almost like Tyvek. 
but uh, it's great for any kind of crafts. And I, like I said, I've cut the top off. Special paper made of natural fiber, extra strong, does not tear, versatile for all decorations. You can pierce, cut, sew, die cut. It even decorates, you can even decorate it with rice paper, stencil, acrylic colors. Once decorated, it can be cleaned in and in a washing machine. Wow. So once you decorate this, you can throw it in the washing machine and wash it. Before wash, washing, use mixed media glue to stick papers and decorations down. So you can put a decoration on there, put your mixed media on top uh, to seal it, and then throw it in the washing machine. Isn't that something? Well, all right. Okay, guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video process on this journal. I enjoyed making it, and I will be making more. I love it. Like I said, this one is already promised to Gail, but I will be making a couple more for me and a couple of friends that have already said that they want one. We will talk to you guys later. Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Bye-bye.